Hi, welcome back to Ianthe Creations. I'm Claire and today we are doing the Percival laptop bag by RLR Creations. Um, this is a fantastic bag. This is the one I do in the first video. Um, I did this one all in fabric using, um, I, I, I had some bits I had like four colours, five colours, so I did the whole bag just matching up those colours. Um, this is a really good laptop bag. It has loads and loads of pockets in it. This one, which will be this video, is done with the drop-in lining, um, like the pattern says. Um, but what I have also done, which will be um, shown as well, is in a separate video, is this one where I show you how to do the bite, do it by binding instead of by um, dropping. Um, you will only find doing it the last bits on the binding. So if you want to work out, know how to put all the pockets and everything in, you'll need to look into this one for it. But um, if I show you this bag, it is like so good. Right, you have a zipper pocket there. I mean, that's like nice and big. You open this one and you've got a slip pocket and another zipper pocket, as well as a really big pocket. And then on the back, you have two slip pockets and then when you open it up inside you have a padded laptop um, carrier case which has got pockets on the front and then on the back or the front you have a, another big pocket with three it's so big with three separate pockets as well so this bag has pockets and more pockets i really enjoyed making this i have to say i am not a lover of dropping linings um i prefer binding but that's just me so i have done it with the binding which was this one and a note to anybody who makes this, um, use Wonder Under, like it says in the pattern. Um, don't use spray-based um, adhesive because that's what I did and it didn't hold it enough. So you will see me getting a bit, a bit of a pickle with the foam, but hey, it wouldn't be one of my videos if I didn't get into a pickle with something. Um, so yeah, so make sure that you put the uh, wonder under or glue it or whatever on the bag this one i left all of the foam out of the seams like it says in the pattern um because i've used um cotton inside and out which i put we use g700 which is um the equivalent of styleville for you guys, no, not Styleville, um, the iron-on interfacing, my brain's gone, the, the, the cotton interfacing, and then I've used um, Styleville foam, um, and then I got my half-inch um, upholstery um, foam from eBay. Um, and then with this one, I literally, I put the foam into all the corner. I, I put the foam on it all because I've used vinyl, which is quite thin and I've used ripstop cotton. So the ripstop stop is really thin. So the only other interfacing, uh, the only interfacing I've used in this is the Styleville foam and uh, the half inch um, 
half inch foam from eBay. And the only other thing I did different this time is I have style veil in the back as well as the front. I have I forgot to put it into the back bit. Um, but as my vinyl's quite thin, I, I wanted the extra structure. So yes, um, if you want to see how to do all the pockets and put this one together, then you want that is the front of your bag we're going to measure down the distance given in the pattern and if I can remember how to read a ruler which I might not be able to Going five degrees. Right. So if you're using scissors, you want to draw a line and then cut. If you're using rotary scissors, you've now got two pieces. Pop that to one side for a minute, and then we will need our H pieces. Right, so now we're going to need our pieces G, H and I. Now, I use fabric instead of interfacing like um, Rachel says, because I get interfacing stuck to my uh, wrong side of my machine. No, my iron. Um, and also I cut both my pieces to the bigger size just because I find it easier it doesn't matter if I forget which one's the top or which one's the bottom of the zipper. See, look, I can't even remember how to put a zip on now. Try a different zipper pull in case it's that. No, it might just be me and I've forgotten how to put on a zip now. Because, you know, it's been that long since I last made a bag. in the end right so take your zip and we are going to place it right side up we're going to place this piece the right side up and then we're going to add this on top the zip on top right wrong right side up and we're going to stitch along there Oil. 
now we're going to take the other piece right sides up and align them up together that's right side to wrong side again Right, so now we're going to need our zipper pocket in um, facing. I'm going to find the middle of that one. Get a little clip. Find the middle of this one. are going to put this line it up there pin it vinyl or whatever for the front don't clip don't put pins in now we're going to need to grab our ruler to want to mark down the distance required in the pattern Draw a line. And then down again in the pattern. And then you are going to want to draw your ends. So now we're going to take that to the machine, we're going to stitch all the way around there. So take our stitch length down smaller. start and stop at the, back, at the beginning and end, back stitch. Now, using your seam ripper, let's start. Oh, if you need to, you can draw a line and then your V's um, just to make it um, a bit easier. I don't need to, to draw them in. You want to get as close as you can to the stitching without cutting the stitching. Might find little scissors help. To the corner of the stitching. Now, poke this through. This is where I can take it to the iron and give it a good press. And if you've used interfacing, 
this will then stick nicely on so I'll bring this back through I'm going to take it to the iron and I'm going to press it done it right so I've now pressed that so we're now going to need to take our zipper pocket and we want to make sure that we have the zip the side that we want to open it so I want to open it left to right so I'll make sure the zips on that side I'm going to add double-sided tape just to stop it moving So I can't always unpeel double sided tape. or not as I can't seem to get the double sided tape off <laughs> right okay so we're gonna have to try that sure the zips in the middle I mean if you want make sure you line it all up nicely middle and then oh check yes that's on the right side and then eyeball those two now I'm going to take it to the machine, we're going to stitch around there. Right, needles come on thread.
sure these zips pockets all flat underneath. to slide the zip back under. As you can see I've gone off a bit there and I've gone off a bit there so I'm just going to go and redo those and then I will be back. Right so I've done the zipper pocket so now I want to turn it over I want to lie it down and because I don't cut one shorter than the other I cut it off now it just means then I don't need to worry if I've put it the wrong one on the wrong way whatever so now we want to make sure we move the bag out the way I'm going to sew down the seam We're just getting the pocket not the bag side making sure the exterior of the bag is out of the way and then what have I done? off and now we have our first super pocket okay so you're going to need piece J K and L which is your zipper pocket number two piece M and N and piece C. So we're going to start with, oh, we need to wait. We're also going to need your zip with your zipper pull. So again, Right side up, wrong side, drop the zipper down, and stitch along there, flip it, stitch, and again on this side, right side, wrong side. So I'll take that to the machine and I will do that and I'll be back. Right, so I've just gone and done that at the machine. It's exactly the same process as the last zip we did pop that to one side for a moment I'm going to get our M piece right so we're going to measure down the distance stated in the pattern right. 
and this is to help line up the interfacing and to pop that there making sure it's straight Pins. Right, so from the top edge, mark down the amount in the pattern. I'm going to find the middle. Don't forget to find the middle. Right. Pop that down. And I'll now we want to make sure that that measures. required in the pattern. I'm going to take that to the machine and we're just going to stitch along this line here. Making sure to turn our stitch length down. Starting point, cut along, and then we want to cut as close to those corners as we can. Now, want to turn those inside. And give that an iron right so I've just ironed that and you want to make sure that whatever you've used to mark the fabric brushes off now we're going to need our zipper pocket we've just done making sure that right. let's try some double-sided tape again see if we have any more luck this time If I didn't bite my nails, maybe I'd have some fingernails. Shh, don't say anything. It might hear us. I feel like I've 
won the lottery. Right, now we want to oops. We want to place this on there. Trying to centre the zip. Again, I want it open left to right, so my zip's on that side. Okay, I'm going to take that to the machine and we're going to top stitch all the way around there. this bit we need to put this back through making sure that we keep the zip closed bring it over again if you've done the measurements as the instructions then you'll have these both the same size because I always end up getting one wrong I cut mine both the same and then cut them in a minute now making sure the piece M is out of the way So the whole thing shut. Well, I just want to cut this bit off. So now, cut our loose threads, cut this so it's even, and I'm just going to cinch those edges so the tape doesn't Anyway, uh, fray. Right. So now we want to get our put that to one side for a moment, and we want our piece C. So now we want to put those right sides together. So we go down to our construction length stitch, which is about two and a half for me. And we're going to sew with the seam allowance in the pattern. there to make sure it's 
held tight so that when we come round, So now I'm going to cut down the seam allowance. I'm using some pinking shears. Helps remove the bulk in the pattern. Now where I've left the gap, I'm not trimming the seam allowance so that I have a bit more to tuck up and play with. If you don't have pinking shears, then you can use a normal pair of scissors and just cut around the corners. It just means when you turn it, you have a smoother edge. Pokey thing. So where you've not cut that, it gives you a bit more thing, a bit more um, space to turn it under. So now we're going to take that to. I want to say dishwasher the iron and give that an iron, and I'll be back. Right. So now I have done this. It's all ironed. So we'll take that to the machine in a minute and we'll top stitch across there. But first of all, I'll mark this bit up according to the pattern instructions. Again, making sure it's an air erasable pen, whatever. So what we'll do is we will top stitch along here and then we'll place this on here using the marks we've done and we'll go around there. So we want to go up to our top stitching length. on here like so sure the pocket's out of the way. And now we can pop that to one side and go on with the next bit. Right, I do this bit slightly different. So fold over the amount each side that it says in the pattern. And then what I've done is on my zipper tape, I have marked the length that the zip should be once the um 
once the tabs are on. So, to slide that onto there. And then making sure my zips in there. that one there before we cut the now we just want to make sure just the distance required in the pattern. She does. So going to cut close to there. Make sure I've burnt the end. Pop this on where that line is. both sides and pin. So I'm going to take that to the machine and we're going to just stitch across stitch across the ends. So using our top stitch length which in my case is three Now we're going to need our bottom front panel, our bit we cut off, our M and our N and our zipper that we've just done. So now we're going to place this right side up, we're going to get the zip and place it wrong side down. Now making sure when you turn it over the zip opens whichever way it is you'd like it to open. Line that one up there. And then I go to here. And we can now pop this on. Now we're going to take our end piece and we're going to pop that right side down. So you've got right sides facing each other. going to take it to the machine, we're going to stitch along here using the seam allowance required and then we 
will flip it over, iron it down, and then we will top stitch it. Right, got the zipper pull here, so let's just pull it out the way a little bit. Stop, lift the foot up, move the zip back. Now we're just going to top stitch this on. that and now um, everything's facing down that way so now right so now you want your end piece right side up you want to take this and paste this on top right side facing up So that when you unzip it, you'll see that on the back side. So you can either give that a stitch now, a small stitch now, or grab your bit that you cut off earlier. We're going to add that right side down. We're now going to stitch across there the seam allowance in the pattern. So once again, just to make sure you've got it right, this top bit that you cut off the front panel down, this one facing up, and the end panel facing up. Back to construction length stitch. Move your zip out the way. sure you're going through all the layers now you want to lift this bit up Go and give it a press. So this lots downwards. This bit's up. Right, so I've just dined it so that this is bits up, the rest of it's down. I'm going to top stitch that. 
using the seam allowance, no, using a stitch length of three in my case on my machine. Stopping to move the zip. Now, we're going to seal this pocket up, so we want to make sure we get just the pocket. So we are making sure that the rest of the bag is out that way. off this bit and then I'm gonna lay it down flat down the sides Now we want to lie this to one side. So you've got a zip pocket there, and you've got a big zip pocket with a zipper in there and a slip pocket there. So now we're going to close the zips and put it to one side yay you've done the front panel onwards and upwards <laughs>